the man go through. Let the man go through. That's right. Sign and let the man go through. Let the man go through. Move aside. Sign and let the man go through. Let the man go through. Welcome back to the Patrick Regan Show here on the Libertarian Lighthouse Radio Network and News Talk 98.7 WLKI. This last segment, I wanted to read a few points from a column by Judge Andrew Napolitano. I posted a link to this on our Facebook page along with an excerpt, but I wanted to cover it here as well in case some of you guys didn't catch that or something. And I'll try to get to as much of it as I can before the end of the segment here. The column is entitled, Before You Rejoice. And it starts out, Before you rejoice that the government has seized an alleged terrorist in Libya who was indicted for planning the notorious 1998 U.S. Embassy bombings in Africa. Before you join the House of Representatives in a standing ovation for the Capitol Hill police who killed a woman whose car struck a White House fence, and who then drove away at a high speed. And before you commend the New York Police Department for quickly getting to the bottom of an alleged assault by a motorcycle gang that tormented a young family on a city street. And what he's leading up to, before you rejoice at all that, please give some thought to the rule of law. Last weekend, a team of Navy SEALs kidnapped a Libyan, and I'm going to screw his name up. (laughs) It's Abu Anas al-Libi, and they kidnapped him off a public street in Tripoli. The Navy man did not have a warrant for his arrest, did not have the permission of the local authorities or the Libyan government to carry out this kidnapping, and were unlawfully present bearing arms in public in Libya. Now, many of his alleged accomplices already had been arrested, prosecuted, and convicted in the U.S. The U.S. could have sought his extradition, as it did with some of them, had President Obama not bombed the American-friendly government of Colonel Muammar Gaddafi out of existence without a congressional declaration of war. The judge also writes, Obama apologists have Praise this maneuver as a bloodless way to obtain justice without using drones to kill. And he notes on this, how low have we sunk when Obama can be praised for not executing someone with a drone? (laughs) And he's right. (laughs) Secretary of State John Kerry acknowledging that Al Libby is innocent until proven guilty has claimed that the rule of law was followed here because he will be brought to a civilian U.S. court for trial. You know, it's amazing how many of these liberal Obama supporters protesting against this very type of thing during Bush's presidency, and now you hear nothing from them. If this administration points out anything to you, I hope it's how superficial these liberals are. If their guys in office, worldwide murder and killing of innocent people, it just eh, doesn't seem to matter anymore. But getting back to the judge's column here, he he continued with it. It borders on the ridiculous for Kerry to profess fidelity to the rule of law when this criminal gambit was anything but. Fact, we are not at war with Libya. Fact, we cannot lawfully, under international law, American law, or Libyan law, engage in law enforcement or offensive operations in Libya without the express consent of the local and national authorities. Fact, as a defendant in federal court in the Second Circuit, Al Libby must be brought to a federal judge in New York City within 48 hours of his arrest. He also writes, don't hold your breath waiting for him in lower Manhattan as the feds will, quote, debrief him aboard ship before turning him over to federal prosecutors for trial. One can only imagine what that debriefing will be like. It will no doubt consist of torture. That's why the interrogation is conducted on the high seas, where the government will claim it is free to disobey any federal law. And that's why the Geneva Conventions prohibit housing prisoners of war aboard ships. (laughs) What kind of government seeks venues in which it can break the law? One that has forgotten that every time Bush made his extraterritorial argument to the Supreme Court, it was rejected. Wherever the American government goes and whatever it does, it remains subject to the confines of the Constitution. 
Not to worry, administration sources claim, the FBI won't learn of whatever beans Al Libby spills while the CIA is simulating his drowning. And he continues writing, wrong, wrong again, while no federal court will admit evidence obtained under torture, the Patriot Act, that monstrosity that permits federal agents to write their own search warrants, requires intelligence interrogators and law enforcement interrogators to share information, even the results of torture. So much for the presumption of innocence, the right to a lawyer, the right to remain silent, the right to be brought before a judge, and the rule of law. The judge goes on to write, the U.S. is a signatory to treaties that prohibit kidnapping, no matter the governmental need for the victim. Just ask Robert Selden Lady, a former CIA station chief in Milan, who was convicted in absentia a few years ago in Italy, of kidnapping a Muslim imam there and then was arrested on an international warrant in Panama this summer. And as well as George Bush was also himself and others were convicted in abstention of war crimes by a court in Malaysia. And the judge writes, can you imagine the outcry if either of these two people were kidnapped off American streets by foreign agents? How can it be lawful for the U.S. government to kidnap innocent foreigners, but not the foreign agents to kidnap guilty Americans? And that's something to think about this week, how much we're overstepping our bounds as a country and how much we're really becoming not the country that stands for freedom and liberty and rule of law. All right, we're up on the end of the break here. If you want more more information about us, as I mentioned, go to our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Patrick Riggins Show. And you don't have to be a member of Facebook to see that. Just type in that address, facebook.com forward slash Patrick Riggins Show. And you can also see us at our YouTube channel at youtube.com, again, forward slash Patrick Riggins Show, and that's all together. And Riggins is spelled R-I-G-G-I-N-S in case you need that. And if you want to email us, again, same thing, Patrick Riggins Show at gmail.com. Hey, remember, as I say every week, liberty begins with you. It's in your mind. Don't forget that as you go throughout this week. Join me next Saturday afternoon at 4, where we'll be fighting for freedom, liberty, and the restoration of the Constitution. Thanks for listening, and have a fantastic week. Join us again next week for a solid dose of truth on The Patrick Riggins Show.